Hey readers, I'm Abby. And I'm Jess. And we are here talking about our April book club pick, yeah. Gingerbread by Helen Oyoyemi. Do you want so, to tell them a little bit about what it's about? Yes, okay. with no spoilers, this book centers on mother, Harriet Lee, mm -hmm. and her daughter, Perdita. And Harriet wants nothing more than to get along with the moms at Perdita's school and <laughs> to sort of fit in yeah. in their London town. But she doesn't. She's sort of an outcast, and she's sweet but sort of bumbling. But one thing she does have going for her is her family's gingerbread recipe, mm -hmm. which is not the gingerbread man that you would sort of think of. It's this rich, dark, mm -hmm. delicious, delicious, but also sort of sinister gingerbread. And um, she tries to give that to the other parents at Perdita's school to sort of lure them into it being was her so friend. sad when they didn't care. I know. They don't care. They don't care. So this book centers on Harriet and Perdita, but then also sort of telescopes out from there and looks at Harriet's upbringing in this sort of magical land that is also, not really on a map. Yeah, no one really believes that it actually exists. But it's called Drew Hastrana. Yes. And it is this very magical, mystical land. Yeah. And for most of the book, Harriet is talking about her life growing up there with her mother, Margot. Of course, the gingerbread is ever present. Yep. And her childhood friend, Gretel. Maybe I should say frenemy. Gretel's a little Gretel's unhinged. a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but this sort of looks at the tale of Hansel and Gretel, but spins it completely on its head. Um, and so that's just a brief overview, and I won't say too much more in case yeah. you haven't read it, but um, one of the things that Helen Oyoyemi does so, so well is reinvent, reconfigure these classic fairy tales, mm -hmm. which we've grown up with, of course, Yeah. Um, but she completely spins them into a new dimension. Mm -hmm. So I've read two of her other books. I've read Mr. Fox and I've read Boy Snowbird. Mr. Fox re-examines the fable Mr. Fox. Okay. That's an English sort of fable and um, of the same name, Mr. Mm -hmm. Fox. And then Boy Snowbird re-examines Snow White. Snow White. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I actually haven't read any of Helen Oyemi's previous books. So this was my first like foray into her writing and I don't know what I expected. I was like, oh, fairy tales, this will be fun and light, and, and it was not. No, it's so <laughs> it's, not light. <laughs> it's not light, it's not, it's fun, but I, would, I think there's a lot of heavy stuff that she goes into, and it's dark and sinister at some points, and that's definitely not what I expected. <laughs> well, and when you think about these fairy tales that we've grown up with, a lot of them are actually sinister at oh, their yeah. very core. Yes. and they're very grim. Tinged with racism in a lot of ways. Yes. And yes. like, you know, that song, Ring Around a Rosie? Oh my God, it's that's about, about the about black. That's about the plague. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. she actually takes these elements that in some cases are already there um, and, like amplifies and amplifies and, and pokes at them and, yeah. and sort of, um, yeah. so Gingerbread examines Hansel and Gretel a little bit, but really focuses on our girl Gretel. Um, Who is, the way she's described, she sounds very scary. Harry. Yes. Um, she is first found by Harriet in a well. Like she comes out of this well and Harriet's like, hello. And Gretel, <laughs> Gretel doesn't have like regular eyes. She has like multiple pupils in each eye. And Harriet's just kind of like, what are you doing in this well? Totally. She just threw this other girl <laughs> down the well. Um, so she, Gretel is a complex character, yeah. for sure. And yeah. she describes herself as a changeling. Um, so she wanted to go down into the well to get a different perspective on life <laughs> and reemerge as a changeling. Um, so she's just kind of all over the place. But yeah. Harriet loves her. 
And they be, do does. become friends. Yes. Lifelong friends. And now Harriet actually also spends a lot of time with Gretel's mother, Cleo. Yes, Cleo. Um, Don't they, like Cleo. Cleo is a biatch, let's She's just really say. rich. She's very rich. Yeah. She's miserly. Um, she holds on to that money. And she actually takes these young girls from the countryside of Drew Hastrana. Very and poor girls. Brings them into the city. Think like the Industrial Revolution in mm -hmm. the States, but now they have created this sort of almost like Disney World of gingerbread. Um, and these young girls are working the gingerbread experience, and they're the gingerbread they're girls. They're gingerbread girls, and they're exploited, really. And we find out not paid for their work. She gives them fake slips that they think are money, and they're actually not. Yes. So it just it turns out to be a really devastating thing for these girls and Harriet is actually one of the girls that's recruited. And they're starved. They're just meant to eat this gruel and it they're sick constantly to their stomachs. She Cleo has someone working for her who can imitate handwriting and so she forges these letters from the girls parents and then back to the parents um, from the girls and you know, it's all made to like seem so shiny and perfect on the surface, but really it's like slave Very labor. Dark and dangerous and terrible, yeah. yeah. Um, so that sort of focuses on, you know, that's one part of the book that focuses on this obsession for money. Yes, um, money it plays a big role throughout the book. Harriet grew up very poor, was used to being starved, um, having nothing except this gingerbread. And her whole life, she's really trying to find success in any way she can and help out her, her family. Mm -hmm. um, so money is like laced throughout this, this book. And I think the opening line is, um, Harriet Lee's gingerbread is not comfort food. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive into that for a second. Um, in one part of the book, we find, or Harriet rather, finds her daughter Perdita. She comes home from teaching this class and she finds her daughter Perdita practically expired, um, mm -hmm. nearly sort of dead after having eaten a ton of this gingerbread. And one of the reasons for that is that Perdita has celiac disease. Yeah. And she has just eaten and consumed all of this gluten. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Withering away. Exactly. Yeah. So most of the book takes place with Perdita in her bed, recovering from oh, this nice. terrible sort of pass out from celiac disease. Um, and she says that she ate all this gingerbread in order to go back to her mother's sort of mythical country of Drew Hastrana. Mm -hmm. um, and so she says, though she doesn't have the ability to actually speak, she says that she will tell her mother all that she experienced when she did get transported to Drew Hastrana mm -hmm. through the eating of this gingerbread. And it's actually funny because, well, after, you know, Perdita's sick in bed, Harriet, most of the story is Harriet talking to Perdita and her dolls. <laughs> okay, her dolls talk. Yep. <laughs> so throughout the book, you've got to get used to that part. Totally. They're sort of this like Greek chorus and <laughs> yeah. they sit on they love Perdita. <laughs> all four corners of her bed and sort of chitter chat along. Yeah. And they refer to Harriet as Perdita's mom, which I just <laughs> thought was hilarious. Um, but anyway, so Harriet is talking to Perdita and her dolls about what it was like to grow up in Jurostrana. And one thing that um, Perdita wants to know is how Harriet came to London in the first place. And it actually was by eating the gingerbread. Yes. So this like is connected to transporting there and back. Yeah. It's like a portal practically. <laughs> we should eat some and see I where know. we go. <laughs> I know. Did this make you hungry for gingerbread or it, like scared to eat gingerbread? <laughs> um, a combination of both. I think like I, I, 
do want like store bought gingerbread. <laughs> I don't want whatever they made in this, in this book Mystical here. Gingerbread. Yeah. So the thing that drew me to this novel is I love to be surprised and with so much of fiction, you know, it's all original and new, but it's kind of cool to feel like this is something I've never experienced before. And um, so it, it did surprise me sort of the back and forth between traditional storytelling, um, where I could really follow the narrative thread of maybe like Harriet's upbringing. Mm -hmm. But then I would sort of get like, Ooh, sideswiped with yeah. this like now what is this weed herb that is in the gingerbread mm -hmm. you know like whoa okay she takes you on so many twists and turns totally and um and that stuck with me and like kept needling away in my brain um so that i was sort of like pleasantly surprised by constantly like okay what's this next page am i gonna you know like be sort of flying along, whipping the pages, or am I stopping to ponder more? You know, so I found I myself that was stopping cool. too a lot. I really had to like absorb everything that like we were reading and think about it for a while. Yeah. What yeah. were some of your part favorite parts? Okay. Well, one of my favorite things about this book, and I realize that this is a thing that I like in general, is when fairy tales are mixed with modern day. So I loved going back and forth in the narrative to the present when they're in London and, and life is kind of relatable because, you know, it's just like the world that we live in today. Right. And then going back to this magical, mystical place where there's also elements of things that we understand, though, like they were texting in Drew Hustrana. And I was like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> you know, Gretel was just on her phone while they were watching this crazy show on, on TV. And I was like, all right, this is really interesting and not what I expected at all. Um, so that really that really shocked me. And I'm I'm glad I picked this book up, mm -hmm. I think, in the end, because I learned that I can have patience as a reader and, yeah. and do you know you like I like I said I had to stop and I had to think about things and really examine things and accept them for what they were yeah yeah what were some of your favorite um like fantastical elements or bits from fairy tales that you recognized in the story well the family that lived in the shoe <laughs> and this shoe was like a landmark in yeah. Drostrana totally. uh, it was like a giant's shoe uh, yep. that this family just inhabited and like I thought, I thought that was really cute and funny and I, I just liked picturing um this like farm area that that um, Harriet grew up in and yeah. and just hearing about all these these wild things that that live there I know um, I loved like picturing the map of Drew Hastrana because yes. she like there's something weird and quirky in each quarter of the map so the giant shoe is one there's Gretel's well yes which Gretel's we well. touched on I would not go there honestly <laughs> there's this huge Jack in the box, and you never quite know when Jack is just gonna like <laughs> pop out. Yep. And then there's this sort of like rusted loom that you know maybe is like a Rumpelstiltskin kind of yeah. loom or something. Um, so I thought that was cool. I also really loved um, the description of the apartment in London where they yes. live. So yes. that's like bringing it's some really high up. To and like you have to take like running <laughs> leaps up the stairs each time you like yeah there's no just like stepping up the yeah. stairs and they live on like the seventh and floor. margo gets winded like every time she has to stop <laughs> and, and read her book. <laughs> like re that would be me honestly and i'm very young but totally. like i would still have to stop and the um, wallpaper is sort of constantly growing and yeah. like these vines you can sort of like I would love to see this as like a movie. Yeah, like, I I really would. I'm one of those of, like Jumanji. Yes. <laughs> yes. I feel like I'm one of those book people and and some of you might not like this, but I always am very imaginative and picturing the book, but I want to see it come to life. Like yeah. I feel like I I'm dying to see this as a movie. 
Um, um, and I loved the the dolls, the four dolls I, that talk. Yes, imagine having these dolls around you, so just giving you ideas and like listening to what you have to say. Also, there was elements of um, Jack the Beanstalk. Yes, um, Gretel sort of meets this guy, and he's looking, for, looking this for bean. bean. That he knows is kind of a big deal, is different, but yeah. he's lost it, um, and yeah. luckily she saved it. So, yeah, they're sort of like, you can kind of be like, oh, yeah, that's that's that fairy tale. Okay, yeah. that's elements of this being woven in. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was really, really creatively done. Yeah. And we did hear from some of you that maybe wasn't your cup of tea that it was really tough to get into. Yeah. And we get that. We get it. Yeah, we get it. I think that, again, it took us a little while to understand everything that was happening. And I think part of it is that you kind of have to accept that you're not going to understand everything she's talking about. Yeah. I think with what I've learned from reading this book is that sometimes as the reader, you just have to accept things totally and move on with the story yeah. and yeah I thought it was I thought it was great exactly and I think yeah. once you realize like oh like okay I'm not gonna get all of this I'm maybe not meant to mm -hmm. um, then it sort of gives you permission to be befuddled in some yes. parts and keep moving because um, we both found that like once you're in the heart of the story you're really you're in, in it. It. and then you're like what's gonna happen next yeah um, so if you put it down, I urge you to just keep going. Um, keep going. It gets really, really good. And we ended up both loving this book. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we really did. Um, and I also heard, I read this interview with Helen Oyeyemi that she loves Amy Bender. And so once you put sort of Amy Bender's magical realism next to Helen, it's sort of like, oh, okay, this makes, makes sense. perfect sense. Yeah. Um, so if you're a fan of Amy Bender, then definitely stick with this book. Um, but that's it for our April pick, Gingerbread by Helen Oyoyemi. We hope you enjoyed reading it with us. Yes, hopefully. And thank you so much for, for just being a part of our book club. And don't forget to vote for our May book yes. now.